And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sticking with us through the break, as we did just see game number one going the way of Robert Morris University. We have a little bit of change ups now. A uh, little little swap over, side swap there it means RMU will be taken to the red side here, getting ready for Illinois. Getting onto the blue side that actually lines up better with their school colors, I believe, for, for each of them. So so <laughs> yes, it does. Maybe maybe this is the game that uh, Illinois makes uh, makes a comeback here. Maybe not. We'll see. Um, as, uh, game one pretty decisive. Yeah, game one was extremely decisive. It was a twenty. Odd minute victory, very, very, ex sorry, not very quick, extremely quick from RMU, but they've made a couple changeups in their roster, and we're about to load onto the rift for game number two of our series with RMU's slightly modified uh, roster. They've got, uh, they've got themselves a couple new players coming in. Yeah, it actually does look like they've just swapped out that mid lane, so with that, you're going to get this back on your screen as quickly as possible as the players are already locked and loaded. Running on to the rift, we're going to do the run down, of course. That means on the blue side, Illinois have taken back to the rift. It's Edwin Ace, Pregnant Tomato, Calzone, Peanut Butter Brother, and Plants are Dragon. Coming up against Zaker, Scam Life, new mid laner Shocks coming in on that Zoe. Ichiban, our star player of the game last game. And Rob Stoppable returning to the support role. So one new player in the mix. And already Rob Stoppable having to flash out of that one. It's a free kill off the invade. <laughs> as Pregnant Tomato made that one happen. Zoloff. Yeah, got the flash out. Ichiban could be in some trouble here as well. If Scam Life doesn't Plants. get where he needs to. But Plants or Dragon is slain for his trouble. And they even it back out one to one. Two very quick kills coming down. The Olaf, you think you've got the chase? He's always so tempting to keep going forwards, but even though they have the Olaf, even though they have the Braum slow, they get baited to their demise, and somehow, some way, Ichiban and Rob Stoppable were gifted Zyra Khan this time around. I mean, it's possible that this is just the exact way things are going to go, that Red Side's always going to be able to pick up these champions, but unlike last game, they didn't give up the Thresh for it, right? They gave up Braum instead, and that's a much less dangerous pick when you're playing the Zion Rakan, because now you don't have to worry about, can we actually W in? Can we actually knock up? It's, we can do this. They can respond after the auto or Q comes down, but not before it. So they can't get the instant response kill or hook, which means that's a lot safer for them to engage. Yeah, with that, it's going to be tricky to see if Ichiban can really pull off the same hyper carry, especially coming up against the Kalista and, and a much more defensive, safe support uh, for mm -hmm. Plants are Dragon here. So we'll see how that all does culminate. But I want to talk about the parallel of this start right quickly, actually. We had both supports die, right? Um, and both junglers reaping the kills out of this one. Scam Life and Edwin Ace are actually the only two players in this game. Uh, the, the jungler for RMU and the top laner there for Illinois that played the same champion as last game. So huge compositional shakeups here. So we got a little bit more action here in the bot lane. They want to get on to Peanut Butter Brother, but there's the defensive capability of Braum saving so much damage. The summoner heal just for good measure, but it was certainly safe enough. And now Edwin Ace in a little bit of trouble without Scarl, but it's a lot of minion damage that Zaker's taking. And Edwin actually flashes back in. Scarl returns. Once he has felt the tide change there, and that's another kill coming down to the side of Illinois. They've come back with vigor in this start as Pregnant Tomato, obviously, with the double buffs wanting to get in the face of his opponents as well. Means that this is actually a slight gold lead here for Illinois. It'll be tough to see if they maintain it, but right now, keeping Robert Morris University on their toes, to say the least. Flash fours with the bubble. Yeah, it's a sleep there. Calzone with the ignite should go down here. The tower shots there for Shox. Gonna hurt a little bit, but definitely worth both summoners keeping us at an even keel here, all things considered. Same amount of gold here on the map. Only three minutes in. This is a game of bloody knuckles that both of these teams are trying to play and getting a lot of early damage down for it. I had thought that the Zoe could not actually get Hextech items for a certain point into the game, but I guess we already reached it because that kill would not have been possible without the free pickup of a proto belt to boot and with the ignite picked up off the ground as well maybe they're gonna look for a second kill here the zoe incredible amounts of pressure onto the Sassandra. the flash has already been forced out but no flash on her own if she gets ganked she'll be incredibly vulnerable even post six 
yeah, it's something that they need to be in huge consideration of here as we are getting closer Ooh. and closer to that level six top lane. You know, just a breeding ground for blood at this point. 18 CS a pop. Both top laners coming in ready to make this one happen. And Jungle starting to show some attention to that top side, but Scam Life may have bit off more than he can chew here. Wouldn't be surprised if he has to flash out of that one. And they'll put Olaf to sleep, but he won't stay asleep too long. Flashing over himself. To sleep too. And yeah, Edwin Ace. He gets the kill credit for that one. And suddenly that's two onto this Kled now for Illinois. And all of a sudden, I mean, you talk about things that are going to go horribly wrong. If Illinois can say, well, you know, aggressive games, we can play those too. And they're doing so with aplomb. They've got their Kled. They've got their Olaf. Now they have the winning lane in the top lane, right? The Gangplank does not exert pressure. He does not control the lane. That's the Kled's job. The jungle matchup, they have a jungler that can match Graves' aggression. And they're putting it to fantastic use as well. And besides that, they can afford to lose one other lane. Whether it's going to be bot or mid is yet to be seen. The theory is that mid lane would go even and that bot would be slightly losing. But if they can turn one of those two around, they have a very good shot at bringing this back to an even series. Mid lane's hurting just a little bit, already down about 15 CS and the kill. It's not something you want this early, but, you know, Lissandra is, is one of those mid laners that you really can't count out just for the amount of utility that she'll still bring in when she gets, you know any amount of items. The pathing's slightly different if you're behind the way you gotta build, especially into a composition like this one, where some of the targets are just gonna be so dang slippery. But either way, certainly Calzone could, you know, fall a little bit further behind in CS here and not worry too much as long as, you're right, one of the other lanes stays reasonably consistent and, and, and the other in the lead. So what that will transpire to be is, is a little tricky to see, but I would be shocked if the side of Illinois don't pour a little bit more effort here into just keeping Edwin Ace rolling. Yeah, they really should, I think, because this Kled, not off the top of a solo kill, right, which is fantastic to boot. He's gotten a good roam off. He got a good kill onto that as well. If they can put some effort in, as you just mentioned, keep that lane winning, then it would be fantastic. But after they put a little bit of effort in, they have to put a lot of effort into one of their other two lanes. All they have to do is one more gank or so, this Kled is set. But after that, the Olaf's got to be looking, you know, are you going to go mid? Mid looks like the answer. Yeah, they do want to find it, so Tomato Ooh. dodging the trouble bubble, but does mean that there will be no gank happening today for Illinois. They're just going to run back around, and he's actually a little tepid on what he wants to decide to do here. As far as, as clearing out his bot side jungle goes, he's ignored it, and this has opened the door for Scam Life to come in for the opportunity Try to take away this red buff, and then we might see a little bit of action here on the bot side if that is what he decides to do. But before that happens, Lancer Dragon and Peanut Butter Brother need to kind of push back out on this one. It doesn't matter. They want to go aggressive. So much aggression from RMU. And speaking of aggression, it's being answered back on the top side. Zaker is up the creek without a paddle, and Pregnant Tomato finds his second kill of the game. The top side is just rolling for Illinois right now. Yeah, but their mid lane got pressured out of lane again. You look at the Graves. He's trying to dive that the Lissandra, possibly in a lot of damage very shortly. We'll see what comes of it. They're scan life trying to get in the ult on themselves, but it's nearsighted. What a flash from Calzone, actually. Are Wait, you he kidding got the kill. me? And he stayed alive through it? What an insane play by Calzone. I mean, scan life certainly overextending his hand there, but. The punish still disproportionate to what I thought we would see. Certainly caught Scam Life by surprise as well. And those are the kind of plays that you make when you feel like, hey, we're falling behind this game a little bit. Let's let's throw a little spice in to get things back on the on the rails for us. And it totally backfires. Is, you throw spice at a freaking Indian shop. You can't do that. He's got the curry. He's got the skills. You have absolutely nothing. What are you, you know, right now? You're looking like a fool on the ground because Illini are fighting back. You know, we and we asked. Before this game, what would it take to get them back into it? We said it would take a complete shakeup of the draft, winning lanes, aggression. They're answering with all of them. They're winning their lanes. They're using aggression. They're making insane plays in the lanes that they don't win naturally in order to do so. And as it stands right now, 5-2 to two looks fantastic. But if they can get this, make it a sixth kill, another one onto the GP, it should be fantastic. Yeah, it's coming close. Zaker does have the last-minute flash, but look at that. Edwin Ace thought he would get it quicker, but maybe did not, and 
Scar running away. The tower shot's bringing him within just an inch of his life. One more would have done it there. And he was probably only, you know, half a second away from that tower shot probably again. So good for him for getting out of there with just the bare amount of time. And that's cutting it close by all standards. Cost him his flash as well. And now he's sticking around scam life. I'm going to push him out of that one, but... Meanwhile, we got a big problem here in this bot lane building for the likes of Peanut Butter Brother and Plants of Dragon. They've not been on the opposing side of this lane in so long. Ichiban and Rob stoppable. Maybe still got them scared from that last game, but the CS lead is about a steady 10. A little less at this point. But that's no small amount to be looking at right this second. They're trying to gank the Graves. Yeah, I don't think Scam Life's actually getting out of this one. He does have his flash, but Ooh. I think Olaf... Well, I was actually surprised Olaf didn't want to follow there, but they do have another turnaround now. They want to find Shock Scam Life here. I don't have the near sighted, but look at that. They're coming in. Zaker is here to help maybe turn this fight around himself. Scam Life will go down. There is the Gangplank Ultimate, but is it enough? Pregnant Tomato does not get taken out of that one, so it's a one for zero thus far. A lot of summoners burned, but I think they'll take that one fairly happy. On the side of Illinois there, and just back off. Keep some pressure around this Rift Herald. they got plenty of time to get it. They do throw the vision down. They know that they can really stick it to RMU in their side of the jungle or in the neutral territory, and that's got to be the biggest takeaway. And this is kind of a parallel of how we saw the red side playing out last game, right? It was early aggression, and again, aggression is the middle name of Edwin Ace, apparently. He's still trying to get the solo kills onto Zaker, but this is exactly how red side played out last time, right? It was early kills, winning lanes snowballing all of that together to get some fantastic turrets on the macro play what they're missing currently is that macro right they've gotten the kills they've gotten themselves the lead but they haven't managed to convert it as efficiently as rmu did last go around so they're leaving the door a little bit open this means that if they don't continue to actually try to pressure they might still lose just yet absolutely and that's one thing that oh. separates hello a shock separates calzone from the mid lane for another 20 seconds here that's one thing that separates a great group of players from a great team because you can be great players and not a great team if you can't convert on those opportunities like you were just talking about there but now speaking of opportunity shocks just got a much needed kill smelling some blood in the water that's his second he's already up a fair amount of cs about 25 here in this mid lane that's only going to keep stacking as he's ready to just crash it the teleport being forced out from calzone that's not a good situation you really want to have that teleport available for a dragon fight for a gank in the bot lane, for resetting, you know, some of some of this map elsewhere. So to lose the opportunity cost of that on just a solo kill in that middle lane, that's got to sting a little. Yeah, I mean, the real problem is if you lose that and you just, you know, you're giving up one lane, right? We talked about it. You, it's okay to lose a lane. But if they lose the mid lane and they can't win bottom, they don't have the actual map pressure needed to just straight win this game. They need more than that right now. And so far, they haven't been able to convert on either of these objectives. So, unless they start pressuring the Zoe, unless they start trying harder to win this middle lane, bottom has to be the focus. And against Zyra Khan, that's such a dangerous prospect that I'm not really recommending it. But they're going to maybe... They're not going on Graves, but they are chasing him away from the Red Ward for now. And their jungle is still very lit up. So they have to be careful when trying to pressure for this dragon or trying to respond to the pressure that's being brought to them. Pressure certainly the name of the game is this has been building for about 13 minutes now. Last game looked like we already had the map decided. It was, I mean, what, an 8k gold lead at 13 minutes? Maybe more? We could have been north of that just about and only took 7 to really close it out and that's because RMU taking a little bit of time to mess around and, and, and run up the score there. This time, a much more conservative game on their part, and some of those early mistakes, especially in lane, have just been deeply punished by Illinois, who did come to play, reset this one, showing a lot of mental fortitude, trying to get the lead back here, and staying up by about 1,000 gold, roughly 1,300 on the dot. Let's see whether or not they can turn this into some objectives because no towers have fallen, no dragons yet. And we're the reason that RMU was able to pressure so well last time is because of their jungle path, right? The jungler was the one helping take turrets. The jungler was the one ganking people, forcing them off of lane, and then taking the objective afterwards. But so far, the Olaf hasn't been able to replicate the same success, right? 
they're just winning lanes, but they're not winning objectives for the winning lanes. And as it stands, you're right, they are incredibly far behind compared to what army you were at last game. That could spell the difference in this outcome, right? If they don't manage to actually convert into a turret relatively soon, this game is going to become even. They haven't increased their gold lead at all. Armu have done a fantastic job of stalling out from their own mistakes, and so far are looking like they're in a relatively comfortable position to scale into the mid game. Let's see whether or not it's something they can make happen here. Zaker in a little bit of trouble. He does have to flash out of this one. It's helping him out some, but Olaf, unstoppable. He just wants to get Edwin Ace, but I don't think that's going to be a possibility there. Scam life waiting in the wings to maybe try to make something of this. Could be dead. Tomato's ult is down now. There's nothing he can do about this one. So the smite might buy him just the time he needs. Throwing the axe around. Not going to be enough. The shutdown is there. Scam life did have to flash for it. But at this point, getting the graves back on track might be exactly what they need. Because you were talking about the jungle pressure that he was able to bring on that same champion last game. This could be that revitalization. Rob Stoppable trying to get in. Doesn't find it. It's only one knocked up by the Glacial Fissure. And look at that. Ichiban's going to find a kill here. Peanut Butter Brother is taken down. And Ichiban has to be careful. They just want to push that minion wave right in. Shox is around as well. So this could be very bad for Plants R Dragon. Rob Stoppable forces the flash out of that one. He'll take it. His own flash does go down to boot, but this should mean that the first tower will finally fall and the momentum swing back into the hands of the Robert Morris University Eagles. And this should actually be another kill. We're talking about momentum swings. Ooh. It's going to be a dead um, Lissandra one way or another. Shox is going to take it, and he does so very cleanly. RMU, they were waiting for some time and now it appears that they might have waited just long enough right they've gotten themselves a bot lane turret they've turned it back on its head the graves in the jungle has made the advantage almost nullified from the other side so the Illini as of right now are in a very dangerous spot they need to start snowballing and we've been saying this for so long this game they need to do something with their lead but they haven't been able to the Olaf after chasing into that top lane, after getting yet another kill onto the gangplank, four of them so far, has not taken a turret. They have not gotten objective for all of their pressure that they've thrown at it, which means that they're not using their time appropriately. They definitely need to find a way to start capitalizing on some of these objectives because they're only down 2k gold right now. And in a lot of positions on this map, especially with the Olaf and Kled uh, particularly, they have the advantage still. I think if they were to force a fight and get a pick onto somebody like Shox here, they could really start turning this game up on its head, maybe get a kill on the Peanut Butter Brother, who's down in farm, needs a little bit of a, a second wind here, second chance in a this game. Up, you know? Yeah, of course, a little, little stim shot straight to the sternum there. A little adrenaline. If that could happen... They maybe a little bit of jelly, you know? Who, who knows what makes him actually work, but he needs it. Whatever it is you give him to make him perform well, you got to give it to him. You got to let him have it. If it's farm, if it's gold advantage, if it's pressure, he needs something because the AD carry has been starved for resources so far and it looks like he's going to be starved again. Yeah, it looks like they're going right in for Plants of Dragon. The Glacial Fissure will come down. It knocks up two and here okay. is Olaf. This could actually be big. Ichiban is going to die, but they get it onto Pregnant Tomato and that's maybe not the best here. Still going to be a good pickup. Three, one, and three Olaf. Can never sneeze at it, but now here is Scam Life. It's going to be actually missing the Winter's Bite from Braum, and that's going to be a kill for Rob. Stoppable Scam Life in a little bit of trouble, but that's going to be Peanut Butter Brother picking up the main kill that he needs. We're 10 to 7 right now. That's a double kill, and it's just what the Doctor ordered coming out for the AD of the Illini. They trade their mid turret for it. They're going to have to pressure out this top one. They cannot afford to keep falling behind in the turret game, but it's a huge windfall for them here as I do find the first turret as well. Their first turret of the game, but the game's third turret. They have fallen behind right now, and even though they got a great fight for themselves, you still look at the bottom lane and you say, oh, that's a gangplank free farming, right? They have Zaker in the bottom lane. He's free farming for so long this game that he's actually already onto a Triforce after being ganked four times, right? That's, yes, it's 18 minutes, but it's still very impressive that he's managed to come back at all so far. And right now, the Illini can't be resting on their laurels. They can't say, this is enough. We've got a lead. Let's go for it. They have to say, okay, that was a lead, but a very small lead. We need more. We need more gold. We need more turrets. We need more of exactly that thing. Take their team, rotate to the bottom lane, get the turret, do the same mid, and then 
Hopefully then they can convert for a Baron and try to close this game out. Yeah, I mean, we're only 60 seconds away from that there and something that seemed impossible, not even on the radar for the last game is definitely an approach here in the mid game and, and something I think on everyone's plate here. Also have Dragon coming up before too long. And so both these objectives going to be the focus of each team here. It's only the Cloud Drake. But any excuse to fight, I feel like, for the Robert Morris University Eagles right now would be good, especially if they can keep up picks like that. Because Ichiban finding a big kill on the plants. Our Dragon brings his kills now exactly in step on the 2 one, one with his counterpart, Peanut Butter Brother. Only difference is that 30 CS that has just given him all the edge he needs in the form of a zeal there. Should be able to really take it to any opponent here, except if that Olaf or Kled were able to, to, to stick on him for too long, and maybe only those two in conjunction at this point, as I believe Zaya should be able to get away from, from one of those under the right set of circumstances. But you take a look at this. They're trying to set up a pick. Not knowing that they're already spotted. Everyone's going in for this, but the Zoe's Ooh. leading off and instantly pops the Olaf. Yeah, ready to rock and roll with that one, but it's going to get turned around for two and on to some people that could very much profit from them. The right two carries get the kills out of this one. So it's another one there coming out for the Kai'Sa. Another one coming out for the Kled, but the Dragon does go down and that's going to mean a little bit more pep in the step of the Robert Morris University Eagles as they're trying to fly away from this one, but Edwin Ace, he's got other ideas, and Scam Life gonna force the flash, gonna be brought back, and just look at that. It is so polarized from the last game, and it opens the door right away to take this mid tower. Take two mid towers, in fact. Take them all, you know, this is a buy one, get one free sale, and they're looking to convert on exactly that coupon. The Zaya might just be the freebie that they throw in to make the deal worthwhile, but Rakan says, hold on, that's not on sale today. This Ooh. is a deal for later in the week. And he saves his AD carry for a little bit until Edwin Ace makes good. Edwin Ace still taking a tower shot. Looked to do absolutely nothing there. But now Rob Stoppable trying to come in does find the you know, assist for Zaker there. He gets out with his first kill of the game. Already a Triforce there. So something that he wants to continue to just be building up to get relevant in this game yet again. He's been irrelevant for far too long. And the gold lead still squarely in the favor of Robert Morris University here now. It looks like Calzone. Oh, no. He's going to get punished for that one. Yeah, there's he's just gone. no way you walk out of that one alive. As Shox finds another one now. Does have a big angry Dragon. Viking. Oh. But, yeah, I think he's just going to trade his life to Olaf for that one. Maybe not, actually. If he can pull that one around, outlast oh. the ultimate. Are you kidding me? Rob Stoppable coming in with the fancy feet. And those two... Just dizzying Pregnant Tomato there. Didn't give him a chance to come back at that one. And now there's a 4K gold shift to the hands of Robert Morris. Two in the last minute alone based off of those kills. This tower certainly going to help for that one as well as it's only going to take a couple more shots. Minions won't one get shot. it. Yeah, but... Exactly one hit for that to fall over, but they don't need the brick right now. They got themselves a fantastic lead in the top lane. Essentially a two versus three that converts for three and O oh for RMU. I mean, you want to talk about ways to make sure that you're back in the game. That's exactly one that can go back into the books. And they got themselves a lead even off of that. I mean, it's just as of this point in the game, so much has gone in favor of the Eagles. You think... Yeah, this is an Illini game. They get great early aggression. They get a really easy win. They, that that easy win is gone, right? Oh, the sure. pressure is gone. The lead is gone. Everything has evaporated right before their eyes, snatched from them by the waiting talons of the Bird of Prey. I mean, right now, what can they do? They have to stop. They have to rethink. They have to reset entirely, play off the back of this Kled, and hope to God that they can kill off Shox before he makes another play. It really is shocks, too, because you take a look at this guy, 7-1-2. and two. Take a look he at the goal. The, yeah, he is the answer to Edwin Ace there on the 8-1-4. and More four. than an answer. Take a look at the gold. He's actually... Uh, pretty well in step, actually. He's behind 50 gold. <laughs> behind 50. 50 gold. Okay. But so. I, it's insane. That's insane that they're even that close. It's insane that Arm, you even have that much of a chance. Yeah, it's it shouldn't just have come to back. This, this Zoe, right? Seven kills. Entirely on that one champion. 
I feel like they just popped that redemption strictly to try to get the cannon minion to the tower in time to uh, to hit it with the one shot. Yeah. Didn't quite probably. work out for them there. Cresting 24 minutes. What a shot. It's actually going to force the ult defensively <laughs> out of pregnant tomato, and he's already half health for that too. That's going to be a huge one now for whatever they want to pressure on this map because they're not worried about that Olaf's engage. Now, they do have Ichiban in the top lane. He is splitting that one. Trying to come through with a tower and should get out with it okay. But at this point, Scam Life, Rob Stoppable, and Shocks can take on just about anybody here. And it looks like that mid tower is what they want to take out. Come on, Shocks, you got this. There it is. Get the ghost shot out from the tower. They're not going to be too worried. And we'll come away with yet another one. That makes it 4-2 to two on the map. A 5k, 6k gold lead here for the Robert Morris University Eagles. And they are just continuing to build this up. And it's all off the back of CS, in. but yeah, look at this. Edwin Ace trying to come in with this one. They want to make the fight happen. It is the knockup with the Glacial Fisher as well. Calzone finds the first one, the second one as well. Shox is dead, and that is a huge fight that they need right around Baron, too. Their health bar is still looking good. Ichiban, can you stall this one out? No, Peanut Butter Brother makes sure of that one. And look at this one. Zaker on the bottom side this entire time. This is not the last game, homie. You can't just pull that off the same way. So Scam Life is going he can. to need to pull off the ultimate steal here. And two over the wall is gonna make that very difficult, but it's not dying very quickly. This Baron not responding immediately. They do have the vision, he knows it, but plants our dragon will make sure Scam Life dies and the Baron is taken Zaker's away. Zaker's still bot though. Zaker's still hitting this turret. I mean, it's pretty good. Okay, he's not actually gonna get it. As long as he doesn't get this turret, that was a very, very fantastic play. And talking about making moves the line i needed to do something that is doing something fantastic you take your cled run them down they are mobile champions with almost no escapes especially in the case of the zoe that just means that you can absolutely take advantage of what they're doing and they do so very very easily I if mean... they can do so again in this this second fight right the first fight was great if they can do it in the second fight then they have a chance to win but they have to do that again the one was not good enough, right? They've got Baron, but they can't just win the game. Gangplank can wave clear, Graves can wave clear, the Zaya can wave clear. They need more than that in order to make sure this will actually fall in their favor. But with another dragon coming up, they have an they have a chance to make it happen. Yeah, they might want to fight around this dragon, but it's still going to be tricky. Shocks, I'm sure, going to be playing a little bit more defensively after that last snafu. And as I say, he runs right in. So, hey, maybe not. But look, running right back out, that's okay. Just making sure they got everyone. There comes the charge. It's only on a Rob Stoppable at first. And they're trying to get in on Ichiban. Pregnant Tomato, make sure they can get through the back line of that one. This could be another one as Rob Stoppable goes down. Calzone is in the midst of it. He's making the damage happen. But Shox just has more damage to spare. Zaker, are you really going to try to get this one? He does. He and does. And trade his life for it? Chances are yes, but they just miss. And Shox as well, playing the zone so well. This is just out of Wait, reach for the alive. side. Of, yeah, this is just out of reach coming down now for the side of the Illini. But they do find one more. They make sure Graves not alive too much longer. It's a one for three. They got Baron off of Calzone. That's not huge, especially Baron already about half expired. They got an Ocean Drink. Hey, okay, good for you. But still, the momentum back in the hands of the Illini. If they can close out onto a turret. Right? That was another good fight win. But still, they exhibit the same problems trying to actually convert into objectives. We've seen this so many times in just this one game alone. They can't actually find much purchase post-fight, right? Now would be a great time to rotate top. They have a good way of stacking up. They've got Baron Remainder. They can absolutely take this, but they're backing off again. Health bars are low, but they're not that low. You need to be able to pressure these. You need to be able to take these turrets and the advantages while you have them. I think the biggest thing for me here is that Zanya's cooldown onto Calzone. They need to make sure that that is ready to rock and roll before they initiate another fight because you can't just keep getting lucky with everything. They got onto Ichiban. They did it really well. All of this off the back of Tomato and Edwin Ace on their initiate. But they need a little bit more follow-up to stay alive through these fights. They've been sporadic, so patchy, just going every which way. And Calzone was the sacrificial lamb for this last one, but only really managed to delay long enough because of that Zanya. So now that it's come off cooldown, now that they've reset and caught their breath a little bit, the last, you know, dying whispers of this Baron are finally fading out. They may be ready to fight again. Not grouped though, they're not together. And so to siege a tower here is tricky, especially if Shox does come down in time, but 
We'll see whether or not they're going to make any defensive play for it because it looks like Robert Morris are just ready to give it up. So beautiful takeaway. A little bit more gold in their back pocket, and they brought this gold lead down now to just shy of three. Yeah, and uh, if anything, it's definitely a good sight. But for right now, they need to get something. And they're stalling out again, right? This team is aggressive. They've got so much engaged. They've got so much great dive. But they aren't actually using any of it. And that's a real problem, right? It sounds like a broken record, but their win condition is take objectives off the back of a fantastic fight because you have more dive and more damage. You can't do that unless you get the fight and you get more dive and more damage, but you have to be willing to take that chance. So far, they have pulled the trigger, but very, very infrequently, and it's costing them valuable time that's allowing RMU to farm up consistently in this game. They haven't gotten an inhibitor turret as of right now, and the game is starting to stall out to the point where the gangplank is going to matter a heck of a lot, right? He's already got three items. If he gets his fourth, things are going to be dangerous. And really, how much longer can you keep pulling the same strategy over on Ashok, who now has that Banshee's Veil? I will remind everyone that, you know, is not going to be too worried about getting caught up again in this instance. It's going to stay slippery there. As, uh, 